T-minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. It's time to propel with Robert Hodgkin. Welcome to Propel. I'm Robert Hodgkin, and on this episode, we're going to propel you into greater effectiveness. And joining me for this episode is Patricia King. Hey. It's good to be here with you. It's great to have you back. Now, many of our viewers know we used to do this show together, so it's always a privilege when I get to work with you again. And you are so great for this topic because of a word you're carrying to empower the church. We we were talking before we started filming about how I even wrestled a little bit with what to title this episode because we wanted to talk about propelling into higher standards, Mm -hmm. into greater manifestations of holiness. But all of that, the world gets twisted up into this lie of religion and legalism. When Jesus came, it's very interesting that on the Sermon on the Mount, Patricia, he came to raise the bar, not to lower it. Exactly. He not only came to set us free from sin so we'd be saved, but he came to raise the bar of effectiveness through partnering with the spirit of holiness as opposed to deceptions and lies of sin. So that's what we're going to empower you with today. And Patricia, I think it's interesting that Jesus addresses, I have not come to abolish the law or the writings of the prophets, I've come to fulfill them. And I think a lie has gotten into the church that Jesus fulfilling these things means we don't need to be aware of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's actually not true because he then immediately addresses the law said, listen to this, the law said do not murder. But I say, do not even be angry at a brother or sister. The law says, do not commit adultery. But Jesus said, do not even look at a woman with lust in your eye. The law said, love your neighbor. But Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So in every area, he's saying, no, I'm actually coming to empower you to greater, higher standards for increased effectiveness. And I want to hear the, 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 what you're caring about deception, because this is part of the root issue that we're going to work together to get you guys set free mm-hmm. from and the greater church set free from, is the deception has gotten in that being a radical of righteousness, a hero of holiness, saying yes to the higher standards that Jesus has empowered us to walk in mm-hmm. through the Holy Spirit, that that's legalism or religion. And that is a deception because it's not legalism and religion. That's works to get something we don't mm-hmm. have. What Jesus is saying is I want you to walk in the fullness of identity, opportunity, and impact and effectiveness of what I've given you. Right. Because anything can be legalistic or religious, right? Um, it, it depends on our position. What Jesus was saying um, is that he was going to give us what the law could not give us. So the law is external. Yes tries to make external change, but his indwelling presence is internal. It changes from the inside out. I think that's a very important uh, differentiation because if we're looking at all the externals and trying to accomplish all the externals, we're going to be very frustrated because we're going to fall flat on our face over and over again. But what Jesus is saying, he said, look at me because I'm a higher standard. I live according to a higher standard than even what the law represents. The law can't even communicate the, the, the height and the depth and the width and the breadth of standard that I, I am and yeah. that I carry. So when we have Jesus coming into our heart, it transforms us. And that's what I love about reading the word because he introduces himself to us. New Testament for sure, but Old Testament also. Right. You know, we will find him and his ways, his standard, even in the Old Testament. And we can say, that's who I am. And once we identify with who we are, we will be able to make change. Yeah. And I think it's so important right now. And, you know, we've been talking about this is that right now, currently, because of social media and because of a lot of uh, things that have happened in our nation in this last year or so, especially with the election and people's perceptions of that and what what could happen and what shouldn't happen and what might have happened and all of that. Um, There's been so much anger and hatred and slander released very vocally through the church to one another on social media. And that's just one little area that we're talking about. So I look at that and I think, okay, that does not look like Jesus, Right. right? Right. So therefore, 
someone's lowering the standard. Mm -hmm. Because if we can't see Jesus, and Jesus, he can be firm, right. but he's always respectful and loving. Like when he addresses things, he addresses it in truth, but he is, God yes. is love. Right. So it's always gonna have that, that love element. And what we're seeing with all the division and the hatred and the, the everything, we're saying we have really lowered the bar here. Yeah. And we have to get back to looking at Jesus and who we are, understanding who we are as his body. So the kingdom of God is amazing. And that's what Jesus came to preach. It says that he started his ministry by preaching, repent, Yes. repent. That's Turn a good word, by ways. the way. Right. That's, that's a right. really good word. That's right. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is here. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes. And so what he's saying is repent. And um, you've written such a great book on, on, on the power and positioning of our thinking. Right, winning the battle for your mind, will, and emotions. And, yep. and, and it is so good because when we get our thinking right, everything else come, comes into place. So that when we start to think as Christ does, then we'll start to see the kingdom manifest, yeah. right? And our body will come into line, our emotions will come into line, our conversation will come into alignment. So we need to follow that because the, the, the kingdom works from the inside out, whereas yeah. religion and legalism, it works from the outside in. Right. Now, I always say, I mean, if it's a good thing and you're applying something good from the outside in because there is pure religion, yep. undefiled, which is looking after widows and orphans and that, that's just a choice we make to do it because it's the right thing to do. And it's called pure religion, undefiled. So it's not like just making right choices from the outside is bad. We can do that. Yeah. But what is kingdom is when the king himself right. is resident in us and when we're manifesting his life. And I think that we need to do a way more Jesus gazing right now yeah. Yeah. in order to raise the bar. Yeah. I think one of, the Jesus, one of the things Jesus was doing at the Sermon on the Mount is he was prepping the church for when we are the body of Christ in the earth, which we are now. I think what Jesus was doing was not giving us a yardstick of performance pressure. It wasn't a bummer. It wasn't a burden. I think he was trying to wake us up to the power we have as gates in the earth, like Matthew 16. The gates of hell will not prevail because you know who I am. You're getting revelation from the Father, not from your flesh. And when you partner with that, you will loose from heaven what has been loosed. Right. You'll loose that into the earth, and you'll bind in the earth what's been bound in heaven. So when we talk about this whole twisting of this idea into legalism and religion, Patricia, I so agree with inside versus outside, but I also think we have to understand that religion is all about performing to get something you don't mm -hmm. have, doing good to get more from God. Whereas what Jesus is talking about is realize all that I have given you, as all you right. said, identity, operate in your identity and you'll have greater effectiveness in the earth. Exactly. So he's waking us up not to a bummer of performance pressure, be a good Christian or you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. He's saying realize who you are as a little Christ Christian so you can have great effectiveness in the earth. Here's your tool. Yep. You partner not only with the finished work of the cross and the victory of the empty tomb, but with the power of the Holy Spirit within you. And now you become even greater than John the Baptist, who right. was the greatest of the Old Testament prophets, because you become even greater in preparing the way for me to move in power and reach the unreachable, because you're partnering with my Holy Spirit. Exactly. And, and we're walking that nature out. And it's very, very important that we pursue him mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. and that we pursue his ways his behaviors like I love the Beatitudes um, his his Sermon on the Mount is amazing I want to encourage our viewers to even review them afresh because he's actually revealing himself in it so like for, for example um, the law says thou shalt not murder now he's the one that made the law right Right? Right, right? So obviously that law is good. Yes. But then he says, let's take it a bit further because even if you uh, show anger, you know, even if you get angry at a brother, um, it is on par with that, which he's revealing in himself. Like we can get to know, well, Jesus, if you say that, then that means that you're not going to be angry unnecessarily or in a wrong yes. way yes. toward me or towards others. So therefore I get to see your nature. Not only is murder wrong, but you're, you're saying that you don't even get angry in yeah. that way, right? And all the way down, we'll see who he is. And when we identify with him and choose that life, 
because it's been given to us, because it is a gift, that eternal life of Jesus Christ, his very nature within us, that we can choose that, then our life will be an example of that which is raised the bar. On the other hand, when we observe behaviors that do not align with the word or his nature, we can say, okay, especially when we see it in the church, we have to say, um, it looks like we've got some carnal Christianity manifesting <laughs> yeah, here. Right. But where is Jesus? Because when we choose him, the bar will be raised. We'll have understanding, we'll have insight, we'll have behaviors that line up with him uh, because it's who we are. Yes, and, and it will increase our effectiveness. Always on behalf increase of the our effectiveness. Yeah. And, um, you know, like this is really important. Uh, one of our friends, Leif Hetland, uh, teaches on the orphan spirit, mm. a, an amazing uh, a book he's got out that really helps us identify that. But let's see, orphans, they don't, they don't have identity. And so when you don't have identity, you're scrambling to try to uh, just live a life that has some sort of peace so you yeah. can make all kinds of mistakes, errors, um, make, make choices that Embrace hurt yourself. Embrace performance lies and formulas. Exactly. But, um, but when you come into belonging, when you come to a place of knowing I am in Jesus, I belong to my heavenly father. I've been born again into his heart, into his kingdom. This is who I am. I have his yeah. DNA. He lives within me. And through this word, I get to explore who I am. Yeah. So that That's when, right. That's you right. know, when we are behaving in a manner that is not Christ-like, we've forgotten yeah. who we are. Yeah. We, we've forgotten that we're sons and daughters of the Most High and that His nature is living inside of us. Yeah. And I think, Robert, I'm so glad that you're, you're pulling this out right now as, as, as far as the program today goes because we need it. Yeah. There is so much, um, there is so much volatility in and through the body right now that ought not to be. It does not represent Christ's nature. We yeah. need to raise the bar. Yeah. And on so many issues, right. it would be like um, moral issues, um, you know, in areas that have been called out in the areas of idolatry, mm -hmm. you know? Like, we've got so many things, even just the way we treat each other. Mm -hmm. we, we need to be called out, but that's not because God wants to punish us. No. It, it's like, he doesn't want us to behave in a way that doesn't represent who we really are. Right, and, and he knows we will be the most fulfilled being who we truly are. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to have this conversation, Patricia, is because, and I know you can say the same, I've been, to use a mild word, surprised by some of the conversations I've had with people in the church, not in the world, but in the church. Yeah. And I've had Christians come to me and accuse me of being legalistic or religious because I don't believe we should swear from the pulpit or use coarse language in our lives. Now, I am not saying that if you do, you're going to hell, but the word clearly says, let no coarse thing proceed from your mouth. If it happens to, yeah. don't rationalize and justify it, repent of it, turn right. away from it. I have been surprised by some of the, um, how do I want to put this appropriately? Sexual compromises. Mm -hmm. Christians are looking to rationalize and justify. Yeah. And some of the one, some of the Christians that I've had these conversations with, I know, and because of men on the front lines, I know are good men. Yep. I know they love God, but what I've tried to get them to see is, why are you looking for reasons to compromise? And let's just use the coarse language. I had a conversation with a great guy who I think is in deception. And he said, well, you know, and he's, he was in his mid-30s. And he said, well, I think your generation sees words like the, I won't even, yeah. the known coarse words. Right. Um, and he says, you see them as foul, we don't. They're just words to us. I so, don't believe that. I don't either. And <laughs> we talked about that. It. And I said, well, then why do you think the Lord says in his word, do not let proceed? So he was rationalizing all these things. And part of the rationalization, Patricia, was I think we need to be more relatable to people. I think it's good when somebody gets in the pulpit and talks about, you know, I drink, I swear, I smoke dope. And I said, why would you think any of that was good when, the, when it clearly says, do not be drunk, do not give over to intoxicating spirits, but be intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. Do not let coarse words proceed from your mouth. And he said, I think it makes the world 
see if this is more relatable. And my, my question to him was twofold. One, I don't think you realize the gate that you are because we can either partner with God to release the clear crystal water of life from the throne of God, mm -hmm. or we can rationalize and justify to give place to our carnality and release the sewage of the flesh. Yep. But just as much in all of this, we have to look at are we supposed to look like the world? Aren't we supposed to look like the exact opposite? Mm -hmm. We're not filled with the spirit of the world, we're filled with the spirit of holiness. And I said, look, we have incredibly exclusive beliefs. If we choose to live towards those, according to those exclusive yes. beliefs, we'll become incredibly inclusive. In other words, we yes. will love everyone right where they are. We will make no excuse not to love, which we need to talk about that because right. as we're seeing right now, we're making a lot of excuses not to love. But we cannot compromise truth to become more relevant. relevant. Our, very rele our very relevance is that we don't look and sound like the world because ultimately we're seeing the world fail everybody. We we need to show them there's an alternative. Yeah. yeah. I remember a few years ago, um, I was given a uh, YouTube link to a minister of the gospel who was well, well known at the time, who was teaching that um, foul words, uh, that society would call foul words today are, are fine to use, and even Jesus used unclean foul words in his day. And so I, 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 I just called him up because I was very vexed. And I think it's yeah. important that we do go to the people that we're, yes, you yes. know, need, need to address with our... Yeah. And I said, I just need to know where you're coming from. And so he shared and he said that in my historical studies, I discovered that Jesus used these words, which was a bad word in the day. And I said, don't ever, don't ever speak of the Lord in yeah. a defiling way. Yes. Don't ever do that. And I, I, and, and I said, I'm, I'm telling you, you need to back off that. You are in deception. You are in deception. And uh, so we had a little bit of wrestling back and forth, but he actually did take down oh, the video. And um, he, he said, I still kind of believe what I believe, but that's what a lot of the younger generation are saying. Now, I just want to share from my own, own uh, experience, my own testimony on many levels. But like before I became a Christian, I had a foul mouth. Mm. Every second word I spoke mm. was a cuss word. Mm. I mean, I had a very foul mm. mouth. And um, I can't even re re relate to that now because that's, of yeah, course, I not me, right? Imagine, right? But very foul mouth. And I was addicted to bad words. I, I couldn't even hold a sentence without using bad words. I was also um, addicted to alcohol. I also used drugs. I also had, you know, um, dirty thoughts in my mind. I mean, that's, that's who I was before I got born again. The moment I got born again, my language cleared up. Yeah. And it wasn't because some rule told me not to speak it was because the nature right. of, of the, the spirit of God in me right. cleaned it up. So why would the spirit of God be encouraging people to use foul language yeah. when he miraculously through grace cleans it up yeah. immediately? I, I couldn't have stopped cussing on my own strength if I'd even tried back mm, then mm. because I was it was ingrained in me. I was addicted to it, right? And then like that, the Holy Spirit took it away. Like that, the Holy Spirit took away my desire for alcohol, told me not to drink it, you know? Um, I mean, many, many vices, I could go on and yeah. on and on, but the Holy Spirit cleaned them up and it was an internal thing. So why would we, who are internally cleansed already, because right. I happen to know of some young 30 some odd year old people who are buying into the same lie. Yeah. It is a deception. Yeah. And I'll talk about de deception yeah. again in, in, in a moment here. It's a last day's deception, but they never started out that way. They had to choose. They had to choose because they were, they were Christians who were walking in the Lord, who had strong standards, living them, loving the Lord, mm -hmm. loving each mm -hmm. other, having a great family. And then they started going down a path that it wasn't just cuss word. It was other things involved right. too, um, that other sins that actually broke the family up and all kinds of stuff. But they're still trying to protect it, thinking it's good when the fruit of it took them all the way down. Yeah. And they had to make a choice somewhere along the line. I'm going to think this way instead of this way. Right. I'm going to turn away from the Christ nature that he's taught me about. And I'm going to deliberately use the F word. Yeah. And I'm going to practice it until yeah. it feels normal yeah. to me. Right. 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 Or 
or I'm going to go and sext until it feels yes, normal, right? right? right, right. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I've heard that the generation say, I don't see anything wrong with sexting or talking with other couples about our sex life mm. or whatever. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's just normal for my generation. I think, ah, you know. It's because you've allowed it to be normalized. Yeah, and, and it's like the spirit of God within me yeah. who is pure and holy and beautiful yeah. and love. He, he, um, he doesn't like listening to it. It grieves him. Right. It grieves the Holy Spirit. I can feel him grieve inside of me. I know Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I know when he's grieved. And Jesus, and this was in my morning reading. It was in my scheduled reading. But it, it just caught me because his disciples are saying, tell us when the end is going to happen. What, this, what is the supernatural sign that we should expect to signal your coming and the completion of this age? And Jesus said, at that time, deception will run rampant. Right deception. Yeah. In other words, you'll think that you're right. You'll, you'll think that what you believe is right when it's wrong. Right. You know, and so beware that you are not fooled. Mm -hmm. Beware. And I just want to put that out as a warning right now, especially, I mean, there's things clear in the Bible, right. clear, clear, clear word that shows you who you are in Christ and that shows you how to live as a Christ-like one. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a handbook for life. Right. It's got everything, all the instruction we need for life is right in here. Yeah. And why violate that? That is a deception. If you think, oh, it doesn't matter, I can violate the word because I don't want to be religious, I don't want to be legalistic, but remember who lives inside yeah. of you. And you cannot step over those lines. Eventually, you'll get a seared conscience. Mm -hmm. But when you first do it, you have to fight against your conscience to say the F word yeah. or to go and sext or to go and get drunk or whatever. You're going to have to violate your conscience because the word tells you who you are. Yeah. And you have to you have to hold on to that life within. Don't throw it away. Don't throw Jesus away. One of the things you said about deception that I thought was so insightful was the difference between deception and rebellion. Rebellion is we know we're doing wrong and we do it anyways. The very nature of deception is you don't know you're deceived. So you have to have the light of the gospel, the right. light of the truth of God's word to shine a light on that deception. So if you've been thinking, yeah, there's nothing wrong with swearing, you need the light of let no foul word proceed from your mouth. As a new Christian, I think I was about a year old in, the, uh, in, in being a Christian serving in our ministry, we had a speaker into one of our big events, Len Zodeman from Canada, and he said something I have never forgotten. I don't remember anything from the message but this, and I think it's so profound. He said, okay, if you're stronger than Samson, wiser than uh, uh, Solomon, Solomon and, or more anointed than David, then you go ahead and see how close you can get to sin. Because those guys, it didn't work out very well. Wow. So unless you are foolish enough to think, oh, I'm stronger than Samson, I'm wiser than Solomon, I'm more anointed than David, I can, I can inch up against sin that and it won't trap me. That pride will make you fall. That pride <laughs> will make you fall. And as for this idea, I want to hit this legalism and religion thing one more time because I, we, were, we were going through something years ago and I went to the Lord and said, Lord, I want to make sure we don't give place to legalism or religion. We'd put a policy in place out of love so we didn't become a stumbling block for others. And I went to the Lord and said, Lord, we're getting beat up for this. We're getting beat up and called religious. I want to know your heart in it. He took me into Luke 1. And when we're talking about the coming of, he's talking about declaring the coming of John the Baptist. He, you know, not only is he fulfilling the desire of Zechariah and, and um, Elizabeth's heart in giving them a child, but the angel of the Lord says, this child will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or hard liquor. Now, is that God being religious and legalistic? Or is he saying, there are some who are going to prepare my coming and one of the ways they're going to do that is by partnering with my character and nature as much as proclaiming my word. And you guys may have heard me share this, but this is also what Jesus mm -hmm. tells us. When he gives us the Great Commission, Patricia, mm -hmm. and he says, make disciples of the nations, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord had me do a word study on name once because I can be a little um, 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 literal with words. I was like, well, Lord, should that be the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not name? Because, And he had me look it up. That word name can be translated from the Greek into the character. So the way we baptize nations in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is not to find a baptismal big enough to dip the USA in. It's to choose to operate 
in his character and nature and through the choices we make because Jesus came not only to set us free, but to wake us up. Not only to forgive our sins, but restore us to relationship with the Heavenly Father so we could be filled with mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. When we choose not only to stand for truth, but we stand for truth in the character and nature of him who is truth, mm -hmm. we are actually through those choices out of a revelation of identity and, a, and the revelation of opportunity, we're not being legalistic, we're not being religious, we're realizing who we are, the power what we have, and we're actually soaking our nation in the character and nature of wow, God. Oh, I love it. I love it. He is so worthy and he is so beautiful. And, and in heaven, you know, like I think of um, Isaiah, who was a seasoned prophet when he got taken up into the throne room in Isaiah 6. And they were saying, holy, yes. holy, yes. holy. And I just can't imagine Jesus in heaven saying the F word mm. or whatever. You know, like it's like, come on, really? Yeah. You know, it's this holy, crystal, clear, clean environment that, that envelops the mm. atmosphere of heaven because of who he is. Yes. But he is in us. Yes. And his nature is in us. And, and we have such a great gospel to preach um, to to help the world right now, we ought not to be like them. Right, or, exactly. Okay? Um, to help the world right now, we need to be like Jesus. Yes. And unfortunately, because of our ungodly behaviors that the world has seen, mm -hmm. some of the things they've heard us say, some of the things, the, the, the way we've treated each other, um, it's going to take more than words that are going to win the loss. Yeah. We have to go out and be Jesus yeah. Yeah. and be his love and be his hands extended and, you know, show like show the raising of the bar by living it. Yeah. And we, we desperately need to do that in this hour. Go and declare the gospel for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus said that as part of commissioning you because that hand now is your hand. That mouth declaring the gospel now is your mouth. Holiness is heroic. Righteousness is radical, and it's how we become effective for the kingdom. Just before we close, Patricia, I'm going to ask you to pray for our audience. All right. I just want to encourage all of you, especially any of you who have been compromised. And I just see that word written in front of my vision right now, compromised. And the Lord does not want you to live compromised, not even a little bit, because if you focus on him, that Christ's nature will flow from you. And you're choosing things that are of a compromised nature. It's not who you are. He doesn't want you to be a little orphan spirit. He wants you to know that you're a son and a daughter who is precious in his sight. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now I break the power of compromise. And I ask, Lord God, that you would raise the bar in us in this hour, that we would have greater effectiveness in the world that we live in because we're modeling you and we're manifesting your nature in Jesus' name. And so I pray pray for an empowerment for each and every one of our viewers right now to go and to manifest your nature in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. We create Propel and all of our other streaming media for free for you. We're committed to being here and serving you through media. If you're in a position to sow into that, we would welcome it. You can go to roberthodgkin.com. You can go to menonthefrontlines.com. You can go to patriciakingministries.com and click the donator giving button and sow in to this content we are creating for free to send all over the world to help empower Christians like you to be more effective for the kingdom. But I also want you to know if you're not in a position to do that, it's absolutely okay. We are here to serve you. It's our privilege. It is our honor. We would love to partner with you to reach more people around the world, but we're also grateful that we get to reach you. God bless you, and thank you for letting us propel you into greater effectiveness for the kingdom in the earth.